Hey, hey, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. How are you? Fine. Thanks, God. Fine. We are few people in the meeting. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> we just need a few more people and then we're ready, right? Yes. Sometimes the people get nervous. They say, Ay, a few more classes. I, th I think they, they are, I don't know how to say, confiados. Ah, uh, confiados. Then that probably just believe, they believe. Ah, they, they, maybe uh -huh, they believe. They are very optimistic. They pass the course. Ah, exactly, <laughs> right? <laughs> That's why the, the final days don't, doesn't matter. <laughs> well, and, and the reality is, it's just like the school, right? If you did good all year in the last part, you don't worry. Yes. It usually happens, yes, when you have passed all the the signatures, mm -hmm. and then you don't have to make a, a big effort to pass. Exactly. That yes, all the when you pass all the classes, it's just like ah, it's no problem. If I have a good grade or bad in the last, it's not a problem because I already passed. Yes. Mm -hmm. It happened, yeah. I, I know because yesterday I had exams from the university also and the same oh. have to study, have to work. And, but the reality is it's okay because I already studied a lot. So it's not. What are you, what are you studying in the university? Business administration. Business and administration. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So it's always different, something different, right? Yeah. Do you have another degree? Liberal arts. Oh. Mm -hmm. So. But this one is only for fun, so it's okay. Ah, it's okay. No, that's that's good. Uh -huh, in, the, in the future, your your sons will will see your degree on the wall, and they you, they're gonna make a big. Uh, a, a good effort to to be professional yeah 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 we hope so but <laughs> <laughs> if my son they they all want to do different things so we'll see what happens okay they will do fine huh your son's gonna do gonna make it fine yeah, 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 I think so. They, he, one of them wants to be a pilot, so that's the one who's the one we have to. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, being a pilot, I think it's a little bit expensive for, for the hours of flying. Yeah, 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 it really is. That's the, that's the expensive part. That's the expensive part, but mm -hmm. it's their decision. They, they, they dream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the hard part is to find a, a good job as a pilot because it's, right now is is difficult with the pandemic. But it's it's a lot. It's the to be a pilot is an expensive, an expensive career. Yeah, but it, 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 it's possible. Yes, I think they have to learn in the Ilopangos, right? I don't know. Yes. If yeah, yeah, they can go to Ilopango. There's a couple options. There's a different schools, but Ilopango is the the one where everyone has to go to fly. So yes, uh -huh. but we we'll see. What about you, Jonathan? Do you have kids? I have one kid, four years old. Four years old. Ah, you have a long time. Yeah, yeah, but I don't know what uh, what kind of things put on the Kellogg's on the cereal. But all the kids at that age are very active, very smart. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes, is the technology right now? They have more information. 
I think, I think so. Mm -hmm. That helps. Yeah. Well, the time pass go. Uh, the time goes fast, and also the technology. And we, well, in my case, I, I couldn't have so much technology to play, or I had to do something different for, for entertainment. Mm -hmm. For entertaining. For entertainment, yeah, exactly. Me too. Mm -hmm. That's what it, it's before. It's like you had to go out or you had to play different things. And today it's a lot of virtual and things like that. Yeah. Now kids, they don't ask you for toys. They ask you for your cell phone or tablet or something or something like that. Mm -hmm. That's true. Well, let's get started to make sure everything is okay. First thing, were there any questions about the exam? Any parts where you had difficulties or any parts where you were unable to complete? Sorry. No, every, every, you were able to finish everything? Yes, yes, yes. All right. So everybody has their certificate now? Hello, good evening. Good evening, good evening. Yes, mister. Hey, great. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, let's take a look then. I'll share my screen and we'll go through it to make sure everybody was okay. Okay. So from the listening from Manuel called Karen and want to. Let's listen together just in case there's any questions or vocabulary that you're not sure what they mean, okay? Units three to four quiz. Part A. Listen to the conversations. Check the correct answers. One. Hello? Hello, Karen. This is Manuel from downstairs. Oh, hi, Manuel. What's up? Well, I'm having a party tomorrow night, and I'd like you to come. Oh, I'd love to, but I already have theater tickets. Uh... Would it be okay, then, if I borrowed your CD player for the party? Mine's broken. You'll be careful with it? It's new, you know. Sure. Don't worry. I'll take special care of it. Okay. I'll bring it down tomorrow morning. Great. Thanks, Karen. Bye. Two. Hello? Hello? Is this Mikio? This is Jeff. Sorry, Mikio isn't here right now. Could you call back later tonight, say, after 7? Well, uh, do you mind giving him a message? Not at all. It's Jeff. Jeff Jackson. We're going to play basketball tomorrow afternoon. Could you ask Mikio what time I should pick him up? No problem. I'll tell him to call you tonight. 3. Hey, Brian, did you hear? This couple was walking to the mailbox on the corner when a thief stopped them. You're kidding. No, it was terrible. They didn't have any money, so the thief was going to make them go to a cash machine. But then a police car drove by. What happened? Did he get arrested? They said the robber got scared when he saw the police, and he ran down the street and around the corner. So he escaped? 
Unfortunately, he did. Four. Well, how was the beach today, Ivan? Great. There was just one little problem. Oh, what was that? Well, after I parked the car, we got our lunch out of the trunk and carried everything down to the beach. And about an hour later, I realized that I had forgotten to lock the car. Oh, no. Was anything stolen? Well, I had taken the keys with me, but I had locked my wallet in the glove compartment like I usually do whenever I go swimming. Wow. You've learned a good lesson, haven't you? Uh-huh. Remember to lock the car. All right. So let's take a look. Let's make sure that everybody was good with it. What was number one? Manuel called Karen and wants to? Borrow, Borrow hair CD player. player. Okay, great. What about two? Jeff asked the man to leave you the message for Mikio. Number two. Because you asked Mikio what time I should pick him up tomorrow afternoon. Okay, good. While the couple was walking to the mailbox, the first one. Number one. A thief stopped Outside them. Stopped them. Stopped them. And number four, at the beach, what happened with Yvonne? At the beach, Yvonne? Learn to be more careful. Learn Learn to like to be more careful. Be more careful. Okay. Hey, you see? The same that you should have on your exam, right? Any questions about any of those? I can't. Oh, well. All right, then. No questions. Let's go on to part B, making sure everything is clear. All right. So the request for part B, right? One right request using the information. You want your friend to lend you her laptop for the weekend? Could I? Borrow. Could I borrow. Your laptop for the weekend. Okay. What about number two? Your classmate has a cell phone. You want to use it. Would it be okay if? I use your cell I, phone. I use. I used your? Cell phone. Cell phone, okay. And the last one, you want to borrow a stranger's newspaper when he's finished reading it. I was wondering if you would, if you'd mind. I was lending wondering me. if you're lending me your newspaper. Don't forget the question mark. That's right, because if not, they don't have uh, it. Just in case. Hmm. I think you interesting. doesn't. Ah, yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. This? It's a question. Yes. If I use, there we go. Perfect. Hey, hey, the same, right? We're right. Gonna, we're going to get the diploma, no problems. <laughs> the certificate. That's right. Get the certificate. Let's take a look here. It, it's complete or cor choose the correct phrase to complete each request. Could you tell Matt? Number one or number two? Number one. Number one. That. Okay. Good. What about number two? Can you ask David? The second whether or not he wants, whether or not he wants to study to move together to move tonight. Okay. And number three, can you tell Harriet? Not, not, to, be, not to be late, late for, for class, class on Monday. Class on Monday. You see, it's amazing how fast, how easy. So <laughs> in five minutes, you were finished, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we have to use the correct form, simple past, past continuous, or past perfect. So at their wedding, the bride and groom get into a terrible argument. What would we say? Got. Got. Simple past. Simple past, got, okay. 
The bride's father had just moved aside when the groom on the bride's beautiful dress. Step. Was step. step. Past tense of step. Uh huh. With WP, as you, okay. as you said, the clue last, last class. Ah, okay, okay. All right. What about the next one? Uh, while I tennis afternoon, I realized that I had forgotten something. While I was playing. I was playing. playing. I was playing. And the last one, I couldn't call my wife to say I would be late for dinner because I, my cell phone in my tennis bag, she was pretty had, sorry. Uh -huh. Had not put. Had not put. Not put. Imagine, so Saturday, Sunday, relaxing day because everything was so easy. Okay. The last, the last sentences, uh, the platform don't accept the, the contract way, just the loan word had not. Ah, uh, yes, yes. I think you're right. It, it depends on what they put into the system, but the correct, uh -huh. both, both are correct, but in the platform, only the long way is the correct one. Okay. Okay. Let's read the story together, right? Wilbur, you're going to read story number one, Elizabeth, story number two, and Jonathan, story number three. Okay. okay. Story number one. One day, a statue of an arm disappeared from the garden of, a, of an elderly couple in Florida. A month later, in the mail, they received a photo of the gnom in front of Buckingham Palace in London. For five years, they received photos of their statue in many famous places around the world. They finally got the gnome back, but never found out who took it or why. All right, very interesting, right? What would be right. the story of type for this? What would be the story? It is still, still a mystery. A mystery. Still a mystery. Okay. Good. All right. Number two. Okay. Maybe Elizabeth can't can't read. Okay. Ala, can you read number? Huh? I can read it. Okay, Ada, please read it. Story number two. Mm -hmm. Joy was living the good life. In the 1990s, he was president of a software company, owned a jet, and was making a lot of money in the stock market. Then his luck changed with the stock market. He lost everything, his business, his saving, and the jet. Oof. What could be the title of story number two? What a terrible, what a terrible, what a terrible my fortune. Yeah. Okay, all right. And the last yeah. story, number three. Okay. Uh, one sunny day, Manny and his family decide, decided to go to the beach. Around noon, it started getting cloudy. And it started thundering and raining hard. Manny got his family safely back to the car that the agent wouldn't start. He used his cell phone to call 911, but the tow truck couldn't help them because the roads were flowed. Uh, the roads were flooded. Flooded, okay. Mm -hmm. What's the meaning of tow truck? Is the truck that they use when your car doesn't work, they have another car that goes and takes you. Ah. Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay. La grua. Yes, that's right. 
Okay. All right, what's number three? What could be the title for the story? Emergency. 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 Okay. What's the meaning of elderly couple? Elderly couple is people that are old. Okay. So people that are in, <clears throat> that are 60 or more are elderly. Okay. It's okay. 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 Oh, imagine what does that mean? That means we are finally finished with Inglés Pre Avanzado Modulo Uno. <laughs> okay. We did. We did it. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Yeah. All of you. We are the champions. My friend. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. And we did the exercise together because some people, they can't come to class and they watch the video. So it's important in case they have mistakes that they can identify what are the mistakes and correct. Because I know some people are like, ah, ya le puse, ya lo puse. No, no me da, no me da. And sometimes it's the period. Sometimes it's the question mark. It, little things, right? You never know. Little things that sometimes it doesn't allow you to advance. That's true. Okay. Did everybody register for the next course? Yes. Yes, I did. Yes. Did anybody have any problems or difficulties? No? No. I hope I don't. <laughs> okay. okay, good, good. Yes, because sometimes uh, the people say, ah, que recurso hermano, no me lo firmaron, no están, or, or you never know, something like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, perfect. So right now we're going to take a moment, we're going to talk to our partners, we're going to make small groups, and we're going to tell our partners what was the most difficult part of the course, one, and two, how did you solve the problem? So what was the most difficult part for you, and how did you solve it? Maybe the difficult was coming to class on time. Maybe the difficult was doing the homework. Maybe the difficult were the exams, whatever. So there are two questions. What were the most difficult parts? Okay. In there, in the chat. All right, so we have three questions there. We have three different questions. Marcela, can you read question number one? Uh, yes. Uh, what was the most difficult part of the course? Okay, right. Ivania, can you read question number two? How do you overcome it? Okay, good. What's the, what's the meaning of overcome? Is super resolve? Uh, more or less like resolve, but superar. How did you <clears throat> come it? Oh. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Okay. And Lemar, number three. I'm on my cell phone and I don't know if I could read it. Ah. What tips could you give the next group? Uh, I don't know, mm, como los trabajadores. No sé si, ah, sí, ya vi. Okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> the same as the workers, right? <laughs> so we're going to make our groups and our partners. Uh, we want to answer those three questions, right? We want to make sure that it's clear for all of us. Because maybe in this moment, uh, for you, now you finish the course is not a problem, but maybe it's good 
for the next group, the tips that you can give them or the things that you say, hey, study for this or review this, things like that. Okay. Hi, I'm Chris Brooks. Welcome to Travel World. Have you ever traveled to a country with a completely different culture? If you have, you probably know what culture shock is. It's a feeling of confusion you get from suddenly being in a new environment. The traditions and customs may seem strange. Expectations are different. You don't know exactly what you're supposed to do. You may even be a little bit afraid of making a mistake. In time, you get used to everything. But when you get home, you often have some interesting and perhaps humorous stories to tell about your cross-cultural experiences. Today, we're going to Latin America to meet some people who've traveled abroad and hear about their experiences crossing cultures. First, let's go to Brazil. Ah, yes, Rio de Janeiro. Enjoying a spectacular view of Sugarloaf Mountain is our lucky reporter, Fatima Nolan. Hi, Chris. I'm here in beautiful Rio de Janeiro. Like everywhere else in the world, people here like to travel abroad and have some interesting stories to tell. Let's talk with some of them. What's your name and where are you from? My name is Camila. And I was born in Stockholm, Sweden, but I moved to Rio when I was four. And I've lived here ever since. Two years ago, I went to Sweden and I lived there for a year. What did you notice that was different? Well, the first thing that I noticed when I got to Sweden was how people greet each other. It was completely different because here in Brazil, we kiss on the cheek and they shake hands. So I went to kiss like, and they, oh my goodness, what's going on? And they felt like you're invading my space or something like that, it was strange. This is Fatima Nolan from Rio de Janeiro. Back to you, Chris. Thanks, Fatima. Now, let's cross the South American continent to Lima, Peru, where our reporter Denise Oregui is standing by. Denise? Thanks, Chris. We're here at the beautiful Plaza de Armas. This is a favorite spot for tourists and the people of Lima. Let's talk to some people here about their cross-cultural experiences. Hey, what's your name and where are you from? My name's Andrew and I'm from the United States. Have you noticed any difference in the way people do things here in Peru? Yeah, one thing that I've really noticed is the public transportation system is really different. Because here, the bus system is private, and so there's all these people trying to get you on their bus because the way they make money is by getting as many people as possible to get on their bus. So the whole time they're yelling, get on my bus, get on my bus, and sometimes it's not the bus that you want to be getting on. 
This is Denise Arregui here in Lima, Peru. Back to you, Chris. Thank you, Denise. Now reporter Hillary Garcia is standing by in Mexico, our final destination for today. What do you have for us, Hillary? Thanks, Chris. I'm here in beautiful Tepoztlan, Mexico, a town that both Mexican and foreign tourists like to visit. Let's talk with a few of them about their cross-cultural experiences. Hi, what's your name and where are you from? My name is Delfino Valdez, and I was born in Reynosa, Mexico, and now I live in the United States. Tell us about your cross-cultural experience. I am married to an American woman, and she was making me lunch one day, and she brought me a soup and a sandwich. Once I was done with it, I said, OK, honey, where's the rest of it? And she said, that was it. Well, it is customary in my culture to have a huge meal in the middle of the day, with the beans, the rice, the meat. So needless to say, I was very surprised. This is Hillary Garcia in Tepoztlan, Mexico. Back to you, Chris. Until next time, this is Chris Brooks for Travel World, bidding you bon voyage. Okay, guys. So we're looking at all of those things, right? Were there any tips that you could share or any tips that you say, hey, you know, maybe this is good or this part was difficult. You need to do this different. What did you discover with your partners? So with my partners, Neymar uh, and Samantha, we discovered that it's very necessary to pay attention at the moment that you write the answer in the platform because one mistake, you get stressed. <laughs> <laughs> it's true because you try and try and then the mistake is, is simple sometimes and you don't, you don't notice. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> good. Okay, good, good. Anybody else? The time passed really fast. I didn't feel it. <laughs> but I think also that sometimes we are like, like shame uh, to do some questions. But when you have a doubt or you don't know what a word means or how to pronounce it, I think you better ask because that way so from then and on, you're going to know how, how to do it, how to pronounce it or what does it mean. But then if you don't do the question, you will never know. And you're going to be with that doubt, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay, good, good. And it's true, Wilbur. There are many people that have questions that say, I know, me da pena. And mm -hmm. never ask. And they always have the same doubt. And they can... Yeah. So it's good. It's, in, it's important to not to be scared to ask. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Anybody else? No. Ivania said that she works all day. So sometimes we don't have uh, a lot of time to make the uh, exercise in the platform. So it, the opportunity is to take advantage of the little time, for example, the lunch time for make the, the platform. Okay. Or, or during the, the night before to lay in the bed or sleep. Okay. 
It's true. It, or, organizing your time is very important, in, especially with online classes. Anything online, you have to be very responsible personally because it's easy not to have the time. It's easy to forget, I, I do it later, but you, you need to find and organize yourself. It's very important. That's true. That's true. Thank you, Marcela Ivania. Okay. Anybody else? Anything else? Okay. Yes, no. All right. Now we're going to have a few more questions that we're going to talk with our partners. This, the next question is now we're talking about what have you most liked about the course? And here's the other one. What would you like to, what would you have liked to do more of? And the last one. Okay, what should be included in the future courses? So let's read those to make sure that we understand the three questions. Ayers, can you please read question number one? Yes, uh, what have you most liked about the course? Okay. This is for you personally, what you enjoyed, what, what you had, right? Jose, can you please read number two? Uh, what would you have liked to do more of? Okay, maybe not that you like, but that you feel is a necessity. Maybe for you, you say, ah, hizo falta más esto. That's, that's number two. That's number two, right? And the last one, number three, Carla, can you read question number three? Okay, teacher, it's what should be called in future course. Okay, this means that maybe we didn't do, but just a... It's a good idea if in the future they put this, or in the future, maybe it's a good idea to have this. Okay. Are the three questions okay? Okay. Yes. Okay, perfect. So let's go with our partners. Same thing, we're gonna go talk and answer the three questions. relative classes uh, so that you can see hi everyone at the end of this class you'll be able to express your feelings towards traveling to other countries you'll learn how to use noun phrases to do this so let's get started by me asking you a few questions which you should be able to answer with no problems at all by the end of this class when traveling to another country would you be nervous about being far away from your family would you feel insecure about traveling alone? Would you be enthusiastic about making new friends? By the end of I this, I don't know what happened, game, teacher, but races. I I was I don't know maybe the platform. No problem, Ivania. Let's try one more time. Let's see where we can put you. Okay, thank you. Sure. which contain relative clauses in order to express your ideas when it comes to traveling. 
So let me present some structure at this particular moment. What we're going to try to do is we're going to try to make sense of these noun phrases which contain relative clauses. Um, first, we'll start talking a little bit about how we use this as a subject. And then we'll move into the object. Probably the object, I'll separate this into a different lecture. So uh, in order to form this kind of um, expressions, first we're going to have a subject. So in this case, this subject becomes one thing. Uh, then this is followed by a relative clause, I really miss. And then we're going to have the uh, verb to be. Uh, in this case, as you can see, is the verb to be is. And then that's followed by um, an object or a phrase, if you will. So let's write that specific sentence down, and then we're going to try to make sense of it, as I mentioned. So let me do that at this point. OK. All right, so as I mentioned, uh, one thing, sorry, one thing becomes the subject of the sentence. I've, I've colored that in green so we can uh, see the difference between what's a verb and what's a, what's, a, uh, what's a subject, what's a relative clause, what's a verb, and what's the object of this particular idea. Then this is followed by the relative clause. I, I colored this in blue so you can see what, what I'm referring to as a relative clause. And then the verb to be. Now, the verb to be needs to match with the subject, if you will. So if the subject uh, were to be plural, then this should change to are. Um, and then it's followed by the object of the sentence. So in this case, my mom's cooking is the object of the sentence. What we're going to do right now is we're going to include a lot of uh, relative clauses, uh, so that you can see that uh, this topic could, it can become a little bit confusing. But if we understand uh, this structure, it, it shouldn't be difficult to complete. So let me include um, lots of relative clauses, all right? And what we're going to do is we're going to try to make sense of it, but we're going to try to uh, make different sentences with them, all right? So um, I mentioned one thing. Um, you could you could express this idea by saying something, right? Uh, you could also say two people, or you can say two things, or you can say uh, two things that I miss would be, and then you mention what those things are. Um, but um, let's try to make sense of it here. Um, so one thing I really miss is my mom's cooking. So I've included uh, a few relative clauses. And let me get you to answer this by me asking you the question. So what would you be nervous about when traveling to another country? What would you be anxious about? What would you be comfortable with? What would you be curious about? What would you be enthusiastic about? What would you be fascinated by? Um, let's say that we choose the country, uh, maybe France, all right? So France seems like a very touristic place. And I think that a lot of people would like to travel to this particular country. So let's do that second one. One thing I'd be nervous about is, all right, that's going to follow the bird to be. And maybe for me is getting lost. All right. Uh, let me try to keep the format a little bit because I want you to notice that we have one thing is the noun, uh, the relative clauses I'd be nervous about. Then this is followed by the verb to be. And then this will be followed by the object of the sentence. Okay, So for me, one thing I'd really be nervous about, or one thing I'd be nervous about, is getting lost. One thing I'd be anxious about is getting to know this new city. One thing I'd be comfortable with is the weather. One thing I'd be curious about is learning about the country's culture. One thing I'd be enthusiastic about is learning the new language. One thing I'd be fascinated by is getting to know the history behind the architecture in that particular city. And so you get the idea. Um, so if we follow this pattern, subject plus relative clause plus verb to be plus the object, then we shouldn't uh, have any difficulties expressing these ideas. Uh, just one last thing that I would like to mention that if I change the subject to plural, okay, I will need to change the verb to be.
Yes. All right, guys, let's take a look at the answers to those questions. So what did you come up with? What would you most, or sorry, what have you most liked about the course? Mm -hmm. In my case, the thing that I most like about the course is the class, because it's very dynamic. I meet new people and talk with all my partners and with my teacher. Okay, all right. Good, what else? Well, in my case, I I really enjoy the stories the of the legends from El Salvador because uh, I was talking about that with Rodrigo and, and it, with that project, you know all your classmates and you know how they talk and you know many stories and most of them were very interesting. Yes, mm -hmm. that, I, I think I like that one as well. Anybody else? Yes, teacher. Well, I liked uh, how we learned the new vocabulary and also uh, I like uh, how you teach uh, English because I think that I learned a lot. And also the activities that they mentioned about the legends, it was great because I didn't know about the legends, but we discovered a lot of things. And also we have a conversation at uh, the, the small group when we talk about the activities we did all the day. That's great because we speak and we can develop that skill. Well, I'm glad, I'm glad you enjoyed it and you had an opportunity to practice. Good, good, okay. All right, okay, what about number two? Okay, oh, oh, sorry, yeah, question number two. What would you have liked to do more of? Uh, per, perhaps in my case, uh, it is very hard to speak in fast, you know, simple fast and those kind of stuff. So for, in my case, I think that we need emphasize in hard topics, basically. In, in what topics you say, in the, in the simple past? Yeah, yeah. Because I think it's difficult for English students speaking fast. Okay, okay. Also, I, I like your class teacher as well, like Mendoza said a few minutes ago. I, I think that uh, I learned a lot in this month. I'm glad, I'm glad to hear that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so more simple past. Anybody else? Well, I was talking with uh, my classmate. Um, well, about the first question, uh, going back, uh, so I like the way you teach, you know, because you are always there. Uh, if we have a doubt, if you are always like asking us if uh, we need to do or we need to learn about something or if we have a doubt with a word, a pronunciation or something. So you're always there. So that's where I, I like about this course, you know, because uh, you feel comfortable that you can make a question and you know that you can be answered. And then um, <clears throat> the second question is that we were talking about uh, the speaking because um, 
I think about reading, writing, uh, the thing that is uh, more difficult is to speak to when you want to explain yourself to another person. Uh, well, I think that's one of the things that is hard for me too. So <clears throat> uh, I don't know if, well, the, uh, about the question that something that should be included is a, a speaking evaluation. So that way you uh, will like uh, uh, do more like to study or read or writing because when you read, you're, you're also are like practicing. So to, to do it uh, fluent, to be more fluent, you know? That's what I think. Okay, thank you, Wilbur, thank you, all right. Anybody else? Um, what you would li have liked to do more of? Well, I don't know uh, if it's possible to uh, to fix the platform with the answers to have more options. <laughs> because I th maybe you write the correct answer, but maybe the if you have one period or or a question mark, you don't put it, it's, it's not correct. <laughs> but it's good, but it's good, but it's good. I mean, it's, uh, it's a suggestion, I think. Yeah, that's, yes, that's fine. No problem, no problem. That's the idea, right? Every time to improve the platform or improve the things more. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. What about question number three? what should be included in the future courses? I think Ivania and Lemar have some suggestions. <laughs> yeah, but Ivania and Lemar are very quiet. They have no... <laughs> I see. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> We're, talking, <laughs> we're talking that uh, maybe can include in the platform, <clears throat> like Wilbert says, uh, a speaking activity. Uh, Leymar, can you explain about Duolingo? What is the, the way that you speak and, and in the platform correct you? Uh -huh. Duolingo has uh, some kind of ex exercise that he um, gives you a sentence and you have to record it, uh, re uh, reading and record it. And he tells you in, if it's okay or not, if you pronounce it okay or not. And that, that, that could be a, a good uh, exercise in the platform too. Mm. Yes. That uh, we are talking about that because when we use, uh, when we have in groups, maybe the other uh, classmen uh, have the, the same uh, pronunciation or the same mistake in the pronunciation. So maybe uh, I can correct the, the other person because I have the, the same mistake. Yes. It's for that for that reason, or the other um, uh, the other case can be if you um, if you have with the groups, uh, will you have in the groups to to learn or to uh, hear uh, the pronunciation of the classmen? I don't know. Okay, all right, so good. That's a good idea. Have something for speaking. Uh huh. I, I don't know how much that costs. I don't know, but it's a good <laughs> Like Mark can pay you. Mm -hmm. That is no problem. <laughs> it's no problem. It's no problem. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes. I know because Duolingo has a lot of money, so I don't know. <laughs> Learn. I don't know, what I didn't pay anything in Duolingo. <laughs> <laughs> what is the budget, remind? 
<laughs> okay, anybody else? What should be included in the future courses? Marcela? I agree. I agree, teacher, with the speaking exercise. Okay. And maybe more, uh, and maybe um, a way to include more vocabulary so students could uh, learn um, uh, X quantity of words every day. I don't know. I remember you, you gave us um, a tip uh, a few days ago, but I think that tip uh, should be included in, in in the in the platform or or in the class i don't know okay all right but the other things uh, great mm -hmm. marcella did you want to say something um, i think that the the exercises with the partner are very good because we don't have uh, a person in our houses to uh, to practice. Talk or we have for practice um, and it's a, it's a good it's a good exercise and that's true sometimes uh, we don't have a good pronunciation or something like that but for practice it's very okay <laughs> and with duolingo i i think that i don't like me uh, too much because this app tries to waste all phrases or or words and the idea is not translate okay but it's good <laughs> That's all. Teacher, teacher, I I, I have uh, an idea. I don't know what do you think about it. Why why don't you consider to organize uh, conversations clubs? Uh, so so uh, different students or classmates uh, could get together in in once in a while um, organize a conversations in, in different uh, schedules. I don't know what, what do you think about it, of that it could be a, 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 a good idea. Yes, Sergio, that's why the WhatsApp group exists for the people to speak and talk in English. But if you look in the WhatsApp group, nobody wants to talk in English. <laughs> mm -hmm. For that's example. true. If I look at the message, because maybe what? because mm -hmm. because because maybe in my personal case, I I I I thought the 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 WhatsApp uh, a group was just for information. Uh, no, um, no, no, no. That the WhatsApp group is for that to talk, to write in English, to leave messages. Good morning, classmates. How are you? What are you doing today? And no, but but no, the people don't. Mm -hmm. The, the people don't like to, to speak because no me gusta la voz, no me gusta como sueno. Ay, no, no, y si lo escribo mal. We don't know that, teacher. But now we know for the next course. Yes. <laughs> no hay excuse in the next one because the WhatsApp, <laughs> the WhatsApp group continue. So we can use for the next time. No problem. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And excellent. I have a question. If you, um, you will have a, what, I don't know how do you say in English. Um, do you continue with us in the next I don't know. eleven? I don't oh. know. I don't know because we don't know how uh, how many students are registered, how many students pass, how many students uh, uh, continue. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. It depends, and some people change schedules. Yes. Mm -hmm. I also 
thought that the WhatsApp group, it was only for information. Yes, me too. But that's what you see, that's a good thing. Now I learn. Maybe the next group in the first day, I explained that the WhatsApp group is not only for information. You see? So for my next group, they is going to be better for the next group. We that's are right. shy people. You see? Uh-huh. Right. Uh -huh. Because for me, yo ya asumía que ya sabían que para eso era el WhatsApp group. Uh -huh. No. Uh, no we didn't. I like Lemar. If I start using the WhatsApp group, everybody's going to mute it. Cosa de ellos. That's what Sergio says. <laughs> you can mute it. It's not, it's not obligation to, to watch the messages. The group is there to help you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, guys. Well, but, but if I if I start talking, I hope people answer me. <laughs> I'm not gonna I'm not gonna talk there by myself. Why? Yeah. Yes. That's <laughs> you see. That's that's really. But that's I think that's the problem for the the group. And like what Sergio mentioned, the people are very shy, and many people they are like in Facebook. Ah, tengo Facebook, pero solo para por estar vigiando a los demás, no porque yo quiero participar. Actually, I am shy. Uh-huh, uh-huh. All right, guys. I will answer. Prepared. Don't worry, Leymar. Don't worry. The people will answer. People will answer. All right, guys. Have a great night. And tomorrow is our last day. All right? So tomorrow, our last day of conversation and speaking. All right. Okay. Okay. Thank, right, you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Good night. Good night. Good night.